Opa! Welcome everybody to Stavi's World 904 800 Stav. Call in, we'll solve all your problems. We got my boy in the studio, Sal Volcano. Thanks for yes. coming, Sal. I love you, baby. How's it going, dude? It's t- taking me a minute. I've been trying to get on for a while. I know. So it's I exclusive. <laughs> We're like, sorry, Sal. We gotta smoke weed and uh, <laughs> we gotta smoke weed and do uh, news stories about uh, walruses <laughs> fucking each other in the ass. We do do a once a month Let's Kush Brothers yeah. episode. So if you ever want to come back and get high and read. The news. Are you insane? Yeah. Can we do that today? <laughs> what do you mean? I don't even yeah. want to do this one. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I have stuff to do. We can't do. We can't do Kush Brothers right now. I have to do stuff after this podcast. Oh but man, we will absolutely keep you in Sorry, mind. I did Kush Brothers all day. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. It's glad that the schedule's fine. I say, this is this is Queens, bro. I, I know. This yeah, is it's, Queens. It's a story, I love it. baby. This is authentic yes, Queens. Man. Yes, it is funny. I do like. I mean, you make people go to Staten Island to do yeah. your podcast. Well, not is, anymore. But okay, yeah, now, oh, wow. now I'm uh, downtown. Downtown. Yeah. Wow, nice. Downtown. Dude. Wow, that's Petula big. Clark, you know who that is? No, it's an old song. Okay, song. Yeah. I, I know the song. I didn't know Petula before sang my, it. It's before my time, but I still kind of know. I do know the song. I was not familiar with yeah, Petula. Yeah, you came to Staten for me. I did. Yeah, yeah. You and Chris. That was a good time. That yeah, was that was fun. fun. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, downtown. I'll come downtown. Wow, you're moving on. How did, does it feel like you're a traitor finally? Because you hang yeah. on, you hung, you hung on to Staten Island so hysterically long. <laughs> <laughs> you know, as like as like you a know, place so to do business <laughs> out of, and like not just live there and commute. Like <laughs> it's one thing to subject yourself to living to Staten right, Island, right. but you made everyone. You know, I was happy to you go, to do it. but everyone. I mean, I make people come to Queens, but it was like uh, we started during the pandemic. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. And so we weren't gonna go nowhere really. So we weren't really having guests at first either. Yeah. So yeah, we did, yeah. I was like, look, and I was doing two, and we started at the exact same time. Taste buds and hey, babe. Yes, yes. So yes. I was like, guys, if you can come to my house right. i'll gladly film here right but it's gonna be hard for me to be running out because my schedule is crazy it was at yeah. the time crazier than theirs yeah so we started there but then after like a couple like a year and a half two years it was like we need a space and yeah. i just it's just my office yeah yeah, yeah. it was already my office oh, okay sick. so i just, just turned converted it into that it. yeah because yeah. you really are staten island's favorite son you know what i mean it's like yeah oh, and there's the, a few of us and, now it's yeah. debatable but i'll take well it. you know i sure pete davidson of course but come on you, you came through you, you power, clung you through got, you clung through, you came through True TV yeah. with bloody knuckles. Yeah, man. You know what I mean? Making, <laughs> yeah, yeah. making your friends do quasi-racist stuff in a grocery store <laughs> while you laughed. You what's know this, what I mean? What's this quasi bullshit? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we don't you do quasi. It. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I mean, I'm really surprised. Like, I feel yeah. like it's season 10 is in the middle of airing now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been on like uh, 2000, December 15, 2011 was the first show. So it's going on 12 That's years on crazy. the air. That's crazy. And it's like, yeah, I'm surprised people I'm like, well, what about this one in season two? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it would be so funny to the impractical jokers are problematic. <laughs> now we're getting. Now it's like, what are we doing, guys? <laughs> it's a it's a prank show. They're having a good time. That, but it might it might swing back around. Not yeah. this one. If there's like a a swing and then we go really crazy. Yeah, yeah maybe yeah. in like twenty years, a swing back. Gen Gen Z's kids might oh, like yeah. uncover impractical jokers. The, my- <laughs> My syndication is going to be yeah, demolished. It's over, dude. It's <laughs> over. Yeah, wh- why is Murr in Kabuki makeup? <laughs> they have the deleted scenes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we we for, the loser has to work in a ha- in a happy ending parlor. For <laughs> you guys just watching him <laughs> give sexual favors against his you, will. You, do you want to be a writer on the show? Yeah, yeah. yeah that, I'm actually trying to. This that's what this is about. The, ca- the cameras aren't on. I just need to get out of podcasting and into writing. <laughs> yeah, we don't really try to curb anything in the moment, but in the edit, we're like, yeah. <laughs> do, you, do you ever think there, do you, what about the like, because you've had, I like that you guys have started doing the, you know, you'll have like guests on where it's like, like Eric Andre's fun. Like you just yeah. have like prank, people that are good at pranks. I think you guys, there's got to be like the gritty Impractical Jokers reboot. Where you guys go like ja- like full like that times jackass? It's like you times jackass, and yeah. it's like you guys got to start drinking horse cum. <laughs> yeah. you gotta, things got to start going in your asses. I mean, for sweeps, for sweeps week, <laughs> for I sweeps like. week. <laughs> horse cum for sweeps week. I'll do it. You know, it's sweeps. <laughs> yeah, uh, so we're sex trafficked. Loser has to get sex trafficked. <laughs> <laughs> All right, series finale. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. That's the Tune end. Tune in for a very yeah. special. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's what. Because that is. Because, but he, that's what I'm saying about Staten Island. Because you, 
you stayed and you know you're just like you know you're you got the nice house the nice place you know the nice apartment you're yeah you, you just you legit like it you love it well the thing is is like so i so i went to college locally i didn't yeah. go away and so then i started working in the workforce downtown in manhattan when i first started mm. you know out of college i have a degree in finance oh really yeah, the, hilarious uh, yeah and then i started working like at prudential securities <laughs> and like a mut from mu the mutual fund trading systems oh, i was wow. a business systems analyst i didn't want to do that yeah, yeah yeah here's how i got that job yeah i didn't know what to do in college and so when they arrived and they make you pick a major i was like I don't know what to do. Uh, literally, I don't know what to do. I want to make money. Finance, finance means that. Finance means money. So yeah, I took yeah, finance. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No interest. Didn't know anything about it. Of course. I took it. Somehow graduated with it. Then I didn't know where well, to apply for finance. What school did you go to? St. John's. St. John's. Okay, yeah, yeah. So yeah. we got Queens and Staten Island. Love it, I went love it. Staten Island, yeah. So then my best friend's dad worked at Prudential Securities for like 30 years. So I went on one interview. Mm. And they hired me in, in, in the back, though, like operations, which is okay. like an like a entry-level job. Yeah. And it had nothing to do with the finance degree. I see. And I worked there for like a year. And then the, there was another... Uh, there was another... They were, um, you're, they were, were you like the... They were haze you? Do you ever get... I, you have to, they have to put a gimp suit on or do anything? For what? You know, finance, Wolf of Wall Street stuff. Oh, I'm not, you know, I'm not like, making the connection. Yeah. I did walk around jerking off. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, it was so not that. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah, like yeah, literally yeah. this. Yeah, 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 <laughs> it was yeah. like everyone got hired right away right, in right, the back right. office. Right, right, right. Like it was cr Cubicles. actually crazy. Yeah. Like it was like not, not professional. Gotcha, gotcha, not. gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. As a matter of fact, I think back on it right now, if it was in this day and age, that whole place would be wiped yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, Not yeah, me, yeah. but like I, I you of know. Of course. But, um, and then like there was another, we had a huge floor and there was another department on the floor that was a business systems analyst and they basically helped build the trading systems and they worked with the brokers. So they're the middleman, boring as fuck and I don't know anything about it. I just yeah, know yeah, how to yeah. explain it. Yeah. There's the there's the programmers uh -huh. and then there's the brokers yeah. and then they, they, they don't talk the same language. Okay. So I had to have knowledge of both and I, I was the middleman. So I would take what they want, tell the programmers and we build it out and put it. Yeah. And I, when I say that as well, it sounds like more than I did. Sure, like, sure, I kind of sure. tiptoed around. Of course. Know? But I kept failing up. Yeah, and then nice. I, they, they gave me a, I was an assistant vice president. What? <laughs> I, was there, dude, I was there four years. I was Is not it, even are there. You, maybe they were grooming you to be a fall guy. I don't know you what know, they like, <laughs> they, <laughs> yeah, they hacked like, in your yeah, emails. Yeah, you, you have enough experience to be a vice president. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Just sign <laughs> I, here. You, the guy who literally in the cafeteria to save money would take a Dixie cup and instead of filling it with Diet Coke, I'd take the chicken finger tray, dump it in there, throw out the tray, cap it, put a straw in, Very and nice. then pay one dollar for a Diet Coke <laughs> that was six chicken fingers. <laughs> sweating my balls Very off nice. because if I was called out there, I don't know right. what really would happen. Yeah, that's tough. But let me tell you something right now. Save they five thought bones. I love soda. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I have all the tricks. Yeah, yeah. I'd be late, and before I was before I would go to my desk late, I would said I would just go into the bathroom, mm -hmm. drop all my stuff in a in a stall, mm. and then at like I was supposed to be at like say nine or whatever. At like nine twenty, when I got in late, I drop all my stuff in the stall. Then I'd walk back. Into my desk with a paper and just be like, oh, I was just in, I was in the bathroom. Nice. And then like a little bit later, I'd run back and grab yeah. this. Yeah. Anyway, so they promoted me. So yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I loved fail. It is very fun to find the bullshit, like how to just not do shit. I mean, <laughs> I was I was a paralegal for a mortgage company. Um, and this was during the like you know when they were just taking people's houses like it was yeah. right after the crisis yeah and the the more it was like a mortgage law firm but it was like so you got in when it was good <laughs> yeah ex I mean it was literally I was a telemarketer for something called American Government Mortgage before the crisis that was directly leading to it right and then I worked as a paralegal These literally no I worked as a paralegal and and my firm was like yeah come work at this law firm it's pretty chill whatever yeah. they were evicting people and I was like I can't be a part of it like morally I don't want to be a part of this right, right. so I was just like I'm just gonna stop working and you know maybe I'll get a couple of paychecks out of it, and yeah. they didn't fire me for like nine months, dude. Oh, it's wow! It's like all you have to in these corporate environments, you yeah. just kind of have to be like a fun I'm, person. Yeah, yeah. Like people have to like you. They have to like the work does not matter, dude. You can go years with the work not matter. I was it's so awesome. I was the guy who was a comic, right? Yeah. Because so, I was doing comedy and like I was writing comedy and doing sketch and stuff, and I had shows, so people would come. So I was the guy. So yeah, yeah. they were having a hiring bonanza. That's an official word. Yeah. Yeah, and it, yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah. Com the, the other uh, thing that pulled me away from my entry job, that business is analysis, they hired like 140 people in one summer mm. or something like that. So I jumped on there, but then I was the comedic relief. And they would do cool stuff once in a while, like have like, 
you know, a day that was a potluck or something, whatever it was, for whatever yeah. reason, and they play games or have raffles, some stupid shit. Yeah. So we would do like, who wants to be a millionaire? Mm-hmm. And they'd be like, oh, Sal will host it for right, the whole floor. Right, right, And nice. then I remember one time we did the one where you're supposed to be mean to people, the oh. weakest link. Yes, the, the weakest link, link that, that British bitch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's, yeah, yeah. she's, she's like, oh, Ooh, I wonder how many people develop like sub fantasies as a, as a result of that. Oh, lady. yeah. There probably had to be so many subs watching yeah, that show. Yeah, because it didn't, it, it never made me horny, but I was like, there's something, I don't hate this that much. Like, yeah. I was like, this is peaking my interest. Maybe if she had bigger tits, yeah. I'd be in. Yeah. But there was like, the, it was the, the first. Put you over the yeah, edge. yeah, yeah. Because yeah, it was yeah. like, name the capital of New York. And they're like, Rochester. She's like, no, you piece of shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and there was that famous, there was a great Will Ferrell he played her on, yeah. on SNL. There was a great SNL sketch. At least I thought it was great when I was in seventh grade yeah. when it was going on. Sure but was. I do remember that that lady's energy being like, yeah, this plenty of people would pay for her to call their cocks pathetic while they jack oh, yeah. off. That, that's how you know? she's, they, she exists. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, really, yeah There yeah. is that version of them out there, like yeah. the British older British. For sure, for you sure. Know, I surfed, you know. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> no, but, uh, and, and then so, so one you time were, we had you're to doing do the that, weakest link, yeah. And then I was like, oh, well, I mean, that means I have to insult you're, people yeah, like, yeah. to a degree. Right. And uh, I did. And uh, they liked it, but I went in hard on someone, one the person that everyone hated, and they were like a big boss, oh, and she shit. didn't like it. Uh, and then like everyone's laughing, and everything. we had the music, like yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah. then she was like, "All right, well, he's the comedian of the yeah. group." Like I was like, "Oh god," you know. Like, I was like, oh, god. But uh, I just again, I just was likable, and I did, yeah. a, I you know, stayed under the radar on it, and then I was like, "I can't do this." Of course. So they were having layoffs with Severance. Mm. So I was like, I'll save someone here, someone's job here. You just could you you can say me. Yeah, at that point, because as fast as they hired, like two years later, they were they were like, oh, we don't have the budget. For right, this. right, right. And they were fine. And then they fired like not they they were laying off people. Then I chose to be laid off, got a severance, and then like a couple of weeks later, they called me and said, do I want to come back as a consultant? And it paid literally paid. St- 65% more than I was making. I was, I was making, <laughs> I was making like, uh, I just had gotten that promotion. Yeah, yeah, nice, yeah. But, uh, and they did it formally with like a letter and everything. Oh my God. And then I got like, I was making like, uh, like around like 60, low 60s. Yeah, yeah, this yeah. Is two, oh, that's hilarious. 2000 and. Um, to call someone an assistant vice president and pay them $60,000. Yeah, well, this was 2000 and. Uh, what were we talking 19, about? 2000. 2000. Oh, so okay. 23 years ago. Okay. You know. So for me, I was 24 Still, yeah, or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I was like, no. And so I left, and then they were like, and then they came calling back. And they were consult, we want to do consulting work for a hundred thousand. And I, I, I what like, a beautiful I, system. I, I what an, and you know they got that money like some old lady like bought stocks trying to retire, <laughs> yeah. and they they sold her bullshit. Yeah. They were like, and they were like, oh yeah, we oh we have extra extra money to have Sal come in and tell us what would you even consult on? I don't even know. What my I think it was like my exact job. You had this the makes no sense. You had the I mean yeah I mean that's exactly. By the way, I didn't know shit, bullshit. dude. Yeah. I didn't know shit. <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah. <laughs> I know fucking shit, bro. Yeah, I yeah. had a book about mutual funds yeah. under my desk. <laughs> I'm not shitting you like a textbook like one on one. And like yeah, sometimes yeah, they would yeah. say shit. And I'd be like, yeah, I'll get right back to you. And I would literally go look it up. Yeah. And just like I had to say like buzzwords and that's stuff. But we so had to give presentation. Yeah, shit. it's. Yeah. I just. I just There's so many little nooks to hide. You had the opposite. Of what happened to Eldis. Eldis, remember that shit, dude? You you basically Eldis is come he was worked somewhere. Again, he was we, we lived together at the time. So I remember him being like, Can't wait for they're laying people off and he's crossing his fingers. Yeah. <laughs> you you didn't get remember you didn't get the first round of layoffs, right? Yeah. And then he was so pissed he didn't get laid off. And then you get laid off, best day of his fucking yeah. life, you know? <laughs> Uh, and then, and then they, he, later he has to come back. What was it? You had to come back and then you were, you were applying for jobs. He works for the fucking company that did a hostile takeover of his company, <laughs> yeah. had, had, sh- had slashed, had slashed like, uh, so uh salaries. Right. So Eldis went back to a shittier, less paying, harder version of his old job with his fucking tail between his legs. That is, yeah, and that is brutal. he was out here, dude, we were living together. He was out here and it was like. The company that hired him, their whole strategy was like, you know, oh, we got to get clicks. Like, you know, people have to read our stuff. It was this most, no one is reading the news on the internet. And right. no one's going to this bootleg-ass website. Right, right. right? It was like, and and Eldis would have extra, to fucking. Extra.com. Dude, it was so <laughs> fucking, I don't, I don't want to say it, just whatever. But it was truly no one on earth would ever be like, what's going on today? Let me go on this website <laughs> to fucking. 
And so elders would, we would all be like hanging out in the fucking <laughs> the room. Everyone's like in the living room watching TV. And I was just like, hey guys, I need the TV. I have to do a, I have to make a slideshow or like a, a carousel post about the CMAs. <laughs> he would have to cover every fucking, every oh, fucking. I was doing like galleries about award shows. Like <laughs> yeah. a, li a live winner's <laughs> list and like, oh God. And like a red carpet yeah. fashion. <laughs> well, was was like, so I would just like download things off Getty Images and like <laughs> add it to this like, it would be like yeah. gallery the night. Yeah. Like, Talk it, about. It's, it's hilarious. One time Sav was like, I was working on one of these and he was like, this is hilarious. If your guys' like website completely went under tomorrow, no one would notice. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, since, and since I started working with Stav, like that literally happened to that <laughs> yeah. place. Like they're like Did they're like we're not yeah. gonna do any more content. Like yeah. we're just gonna focus on other shit and like. It lit the content completely did go away. Yeah, and no one, no really one gave a fuck whatsoever. Wow. It They're like oh, this is employee of the month. He got four <laughs> clicks. No, literally, how he many clicks would these galleries get? Like, it, it depends, but you know, on average, you're probably looking at like a couple thousand <laughs> clicks or something. <laughs> if, if we had, if we had something get like, if we had something get like his full time job, could was, you imagine? Yeah, that? yeah, and he worked so hard on How it. How did that like, go on to day two? Yeah, the whole business. It's, uh, it was it such was a cool. house of cards. Like on, on a good day, we'd get like you know, if we got like thirty, forty thousand views on an article, that was a good oh, day. Oh, you walk around, yeah. <laughs> <big swing>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> taking an extra ten minutes for lunch. My my favorite was uh, the the funniest thing that happened was that like. Uh, what was the Michael Jackson thing where it was like, because it was like local affiliates too, or was it R. Kelly? It was like, there was like something about like people in jail in trouble, like artists with like, you know, dark yeah, yeah, something. Yeah, something salacious. And like, and like, like, this is my chance to Yeah, shine. yeah, yeah. And, and like, it was like a local affiliate of it would refuse, like, it, like the Atlanta station was like, we will not badmouth R. Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> they were like, <laughs> They're like, we will not put this on our <laughs> fucking website. <laughs> it was like, really? That's awesome. You guys are still holding it down for R. Kelly? Sometimes I... The only thing that's going to get you clicked? Yeah. yeah. Sometimes, like, I would cover, like, the presidential debate. <laughs> Oh, oh, this was like the the red carpet and the fucking pre and the oh, politics God. correspondent for literally a website no one read. Yeah, like I don't even know how those how the people would even get. And those it was clicks. hilarious because any political shit we had to like soft shoe Trump so hard because like our readers were like very conservative. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, I had yeah, to yeah. be like I had to just write the most bullshit shit <laughs> yeah, about yeah. like Trump and stuff. So then you, you even had to report it skewed. Yeah, it was. I mean, <laughs> I mean, at least it's like has something to do with the world. Like I. Hated. I had nothing. No connection. Didn't want to be there. Didn't yeah. like it. Don't know why I got with. Yeah, don't yeah. know why. It goes back to choosing finance. Of course. I didn't want to do any of that. I've never applied it ever. I you left, had a nice uh, little I left that job money. after four years. I, I and, and then that's it. I, I, I said I want to focus on comedy, so I became a bartender. Mm -hmm. And that was the end of that. Yeah. I didn't go. I didn't take the 100000 My parents were like, you, you got to be kidding me. You got to take that. And you were living, were you taking the ferry in? What are you doing? Were you living in Staten Every Island? Every day, bro. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> taking well, the ferry in. Well, here's how I lucked out. Yeah. My building was one New York Plaza. It is the oh, very nice. first building off of the ferry. That's awesome. So, you know, yeah. it's just it was, it was real easy. Yeah. But my boy used to come... I, it was it was fun working there. It was like yeah. it was like the Wild West when of I worked. Of course, like you know what I'm yeah, saying. Yeah. And my boy was who who worked in the cubicle with me was from Staten Island too. We had three guys in this in the cubicle, and uh, he was he smoked like I didn't really start smoking weed until like late late in life, like sure. 2018. Sure, right. But this dude, I'm talking tw 23 years ago, he smoked blunts. Chain smoked blunts. Yeah, right? yeah, so yeah, I, yeah, And I yeah. didn't really smoke. That was definitely a type of guy in the 2000s. Yeah. Because it was like, it like was. Not a, not a joint. No, no, no. Like and, blunts. And these are guys that can't get their lives together <laughs> at all, right? They're, they're God complete. Bless them. I love the kid. But, but like they have nothing. They, you know, you ask them like, hey, um, my mother will die if you don't mail this letter in yeah. in two weeks. <laughs> yeah. Can no, I trust you to do that? No. They will not. No. But at a time when it was hard to get weed, yeah. these guys had like. They were never out of weed. Yeah. That was the one thing they were... Po and it's not, it's not like you would go to a store, you'd have to track down a guy. No. These guys would have like four different dealers. They were professionals it at was that insane. and just that. Insane stuff. Yeah. They would have like a humidor. They would keep their weed in like a humidor. And it this was just kid, like, it was crazy. Uh, but then every, even our, our first supervisor, like uh, the first level up from us, our supervisor, mm -hmm. he would go at lunch, just smoke, come back, blood, bloodshot <laughs> yeah. eyes. I love he was that. like 
30 years older than yeah, us. Yeah, yeah. And then he would come back with bloodshot eyes. I can't say his name. And then he'd just walk around the floor, literally roasting everybody and saying inappropriate shit for the rest of the day yeah, from yeah, one yeah. to five. Yeah. And I mean inappropriate shit. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. He turned around one time and went, Anybody got a big dick? Right? I mean, there's 200 people on the floor. He goes, anything over six inches, I'm sucking. That's awesome. He used to call me and the other two guys, and in the, in the, he was our supervisor. Yeah. He used to be a cab driver, and then, you know, wow. and he worked down there, and it was, he, he was like 20 something years in, and he just, the, me and the three guys, now, he would be like, whenever he wanted us, he'd be like, ladies. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, it was just yeah, like, yeah, he, yeah, you yeah, couldn't yeah. get away with that uh, of shit. Of course, of course. At one point, he pissed me off so bad because I was trying, he's the person that had to train me. Mm. So it, I got zero training. Of course. No, zero. Yeah, yeah, and I yeah. had to like, then like act like I knew what the hell was going on. Right, it was right, all right. his fault. Yeah. And I got started to get mad because he smoked every single, yeah. I don't give a shit what you do, but he couldn't even answer my questions. Right, right, and right. Then, and then I looked like an asshole. So then he, I started to get mad. He would come in and be inappropriate. So I started taking a log of everything he said mm. and I would write down the date and the time. I would never do anything. Of course. And I get, but he pissed me off and if he ever crossed me, right, you had maybe it. I have this arsenal. Yeah, right? yeah, 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 yeah. People are like, why the fuck didn't you come to us sooner? Yeah. What are you, just keeping this for revenge? <laughs> You're letting this guy ask women if he can smell their uh, the seat after they get up. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> and then, and he did that. Yeah, I believe that. He did that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, you know, it was it's it a was very traditional. Light. Yeah, uh, uh, get up! I, I, I got so smelly. He, that, that shit. He used to say that shit. That's a classic. Not everyone move. was like that, but also everyone was just like, ah. yeah, it was crazy. But um, but so my what's, boy, what's Bachelor Sal doing? Are you? You're in one New York plaza. You got yeah. this 60K a year. Yeah. What's it like, bro? Fresh out of St. John's. Yeah, what man. are we looking like? I mean, you got, you got, what, what are we doing with our hair? Yeah. You know, I, facial I, hair. Yeah, what are we so doing? So in college, I had like the Eddie Vedder thing going yeah. on. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, Long I, was, I was in the heart of grunge. <laughs> yeah. you know, no joke. I had hair. I had hair down to here, bro. I could pull up a photo. That's awesome. Yeah, I have it on my phone. That's down fucking to here. sick. And then um, when I got out of college, I had to go into the workforce, so I cut mm. it. And then I, I became a little bit more of like a, I was never like a Guido guy, like Staten Island guy, or anything. Like that. Yeah, I liked you know. Oh, so like they, my nickname is Sally Retro, mm. but that dates back to high school because I. Uh, my first girlfriend was like into like vintage stuff. Yeah, my like first girlfriend was sixty five years old. Yeah. They called you Sally Retro. She was into vintage stuff. Yeah. You know the You're, stuff she owned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she would let me borrow her blouses. Yeah, yeah, no, no, yeah. but we used to go like to the Salvation Army. Oh, it's like yeah. these places in the city that sell like used like uh, mm -hmm. vintage shit. And yeah. so I would dress like that, but not a lot of people in Salem all the time of did. Of course, of but course. I would go. You were a in trailblazer. Heart. Yeah, I would sometimes wear bell bottoms. I would wear those old leather jackets that like yeah. like, like 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 Reverend Jim wore in Taxi. Yeah. You know, yeah, I, mean, yeah, like I sure. would wear like that or sometimes I'd wear like the big collar polyester shit mm -hmm. dude I'm not kidding I used to wear literal like leisure suits sometimes yeah, yeah, I worked yeah. in the school with a like a, li literally a, a, a light like a seafoam green leisure shoot. that's leisure. awesome it's a tough one to get yeah leisure suit leisure suit, suit. <laughs> yeah uh, and so they, they, my buddies started calling me retro and then that just stuck so yeah. that's what I look like I didn't fit in at all yeah yeah I yeah. mean I was you know I was friends with her but I didn't sure. fit in at all um, what do you think that was about why'd you have to be so different retro Sally I don't think I had to I you just think, think so? like I I I, she, I gravitated toward it mm -hmm. I liked it mm -hmm. I liked it I didn't you know so I just kind of that, that really was what I liked because um, I, I mean I say it because like I had a little bit of that because I grew up in Greek town where it wasn't Staten Island but it was like definitely the predominant thing was Guido like yeah. Guido light right yeah, like yeah, Greek yeah. people how Greek American people have a lot in common with like sure. how Italian Americans yeah. present themselves. That was definitely go we had a lot of frosted tips, a lot of like Caesars. Yep. You know what I mean? Like All a lot that. of that All shit that. was going on. And I definitely I wasn't quite I didn't have the access to, you know, like the but I de we were definitely kind of get into thrift like we we wanted to be because this is like and this is like you know gen, not to date you but this is a, a, a you know a, a couple years later but it's the same thing like oh, I, same. we're talking about the mid 2000s for me yeah in the not you know the 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 nine probably like 10 years later whatever but it was the same thing of like because for me it was like i need people to know i'm better than these people <laughs> like that's that's what i'm saying is like there was part of me that's like I am not one of these animals, yeah. you know? <laughs> so it's like, I'm wearing a Led Zeppelin shirt, yeah, yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, like, it started there. Like, I definitely had this thing. And then there's also, I guess there's another thing of, like, I went to Baltimore City Schools. You're one of, you know, it's 85% black. So you cut people, 
the way like uh, white people expect a certain thing from black people, <laughs> black people expect a certain thing from their white people. Right, 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 so right. I was kind of playing the part a little bit too, where I'm like, like on the football team, I'm talking about how much I love black. Sa- they're like, yeah, he, we have a white boy that loses the black Sabbath on our team, you know, like, <laughs> yeah, and they yeah. think it's like satanic, right? Right? You know, right they're all religious. Right, right, they all have like grandmas that make them go to church for four hours. They're like, damn, we got a crazy ass white boy <laughs> yeah. with long hair that listens to the devil's music. Yeah, they were, Meanwhile, they were, they were all into that beans, greens, potatoes. Yeah. Yeah, 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 hundred yeah, yeah, yeah. percent. Meanwhile, I was lying. Like it was right. like I. I mean, I still like that music a little bit, but I was really just on one level. I was like, I need to these fucking Greek animals to know I'm better than them, <laughs> right? I need them to understand I'm going to. Co- I'm not yeah. running my dad's. I'm not selling cheesesteaks, low grade cheesesteaks to in the in the hood <laughs> right. in my dad's carry out. <laughs> right. I have loftier goals. <laughs> one day I'll be talking about my penis from sea to shining sea. <laughs> <laughs> One day I'll be talking about not getting hard right. in every major city in America <laughs> to thousands of people. I right. need them to know I was born for more. And then it was also like, I, I also just want to, you know, I was just performing a little bit for my black friends. Right. Performing, like getting into classic rock and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. Even though I was big, it was like, there was, I went to Greece one summer and listened to my, you know, cousin's albums and then right. i was like this is my personality is for two years i, gotta like I don't listen to 50 cent anymore which yeah. i did mm-hmm. and then i was and then in college i was like what am i doing yeah and i was like i was like i am this i am sort of this guy right, right. I'm, i am a little more like my you know guido in i'm i am better than them let me be very clear if we grew up together yeah. and you're running your father's carry out i am better than you yeah. i was at the time i still am that's, on, that's fact yeah that's, that's just pure yeah. facts right? Really about <laughs> right but they know. but but i there was just like a little i just felt like for me so that's why i don't want to like project onto no, you no no cuz it was all about but like was where there a little bit in? of that like did you feel like you, you're not because you're also you know South Volcano very Italian name, but you're half what is it what are we talking uh, about I'm Cuban, Cuban Puerto Rican Cuban Puerto Rican yeah. Italian right yeah and then also a little bit of actual Spanish but Cuban yeah. Puerto Rican predominant. yeah yeah so like is there like a little bit of that too where you're just like I just you know is everyone just a is everyone like that one guy who got mad at Robert De Niro for saying fuck, fuck Donald Trump right like, that's right, right, what right. I think of of Staten Island right like so was there, was there a little bit of you being like I have to differentiate myself here well nothing was political Ever, okay. ever. Like, I, I don't think I ha- had a political conversation until yeah. about three years ago. Yeah. So my parents weren't political. Yeah, yeah, no yeah. one I talked to was political. Yeah. I didn't even really get, like, the big division between, the, you know, between parties. I, it just wasn't, I didn't grow up in politics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it was just, you're a dick or, or not. Yeah, you know I mean, yeah, I, yeah. I didn't hang out with dicks, I'll tell you that much. Sure, but sure. I just, it just wasn't me, but... I, I did feel, I think in high school, there was more of, oh, what's like, what am I supposed to wear to mm-hmm. match everybody? But like in college, it just kind of, once I like, you know, once I got a, like, I guess like a girlfriend and once I kind of like started to be able to have some freedom and go out and shit, mm-hmm. I don't know. I just would find myself going to the city, going to the Lower East Side yeah, and yeah, stuff. Yeah, 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 and yeah. I, I actually used to get like, uh, it wasn't like you where it's like, oh, we got a guy blacks out. They would make fun of me. But in it, yeah, like, yeah, but in yeah. it I was the... You yeah, know, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. So was, you didn't, you weren't into like a, there was not like a scene of those people. They were, you were, you were in St. John's and it's like, what's good, the, what the fuck's going on with this guy? Yeah. <laughs> that, much. that was the Even vibe. my closest friends were yeah, like, oh, yeah, well, yeah. you going to write poetry? They yeah. Because yeah, 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 I used yeah. to write poetry. Yeah. <laughs> I used to get drunk and write like like <laughs> drunk and do poems. Yeah. I, I was doing like acting. I was taking writing classes. I was doing a little stand up. I was doing, you know, I, That's, I was writing short films. I try. I made a bunch of short films. Yeah, yeah. I was like into that. I was going to fucking Archie. museums. Yeah, and shit. yeah, like, yeah. I really yeah, was. Yeah. Like, and I like jazz. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah I mean, yeah, don't get yeah, me wrong. Yeah. Like old school hip hop. Like I love. I, I I like a lot of music. But sure. Like like I'm really into it. But like I uh, I used to go to. Like jazz clubs sometimes, right, and they would right, right. they would have of a course. field day. With of it. course, that is a little. If you're doing that stuff in college, it is a little bit for people to see you as the guy who does that. I wouldn't even tell them. You know, you know who I wasn't like. Did you ever see? Uh, if you need to leave, you ever, you ever yes, watch? Yes, it? I'm yes, yeah, sorry. I think you should leave. Yeah, yeah. You've seen it. You know yes, that yes. one. You know that one. I think that, I know what you're talking about. Roy Donk. Yes, the sketch right? with like, uh, with. Um, uh, uh, Tim uh, Tim Tim Heidecker Heidecker yes yes, yes where he's just being he's just Pitch being the perfect. guy drop yeah, yeah dropping not that shit at all. that he knows not that at all. Yeah, yeah. I just yeah. would be like, I, I just would go and not even tell them. But like, I got into it. I would make friends there. Like, I there was this place, Smalls Jazz Club. It was mm-hmm. down on Grove, like in, right off Seventh Avenue, right there. And uh, it was legendary, famous. And it would open up at like, like ten, and it would stay open till daylight, like Damn. in the morning. Yeah. And 
there were nights they had like open playing. Mm. And so musicians from good to bad would go and you would just hang and it was BYOB. It was wow. cool, man. Yeah, that's fun. So I once saw Max Roach, who was like the most legendary jazz drummer mm -hmm. of all time. You're doing it right now, by the way. Dead now. You're doing the Roy Donk <laughs> thing right now. <laughs> Max Roach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same amount of syllables, but it's a different guy. <laughs> That's you cool, though. Yeah. Very meat and potato stuff. <laughs> wow, Max Roach. Get the fuck out of here, Sal. It, it, really? It, 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 it's like saying Michael Jordan. Yeah, 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 but, yeah. But um, but that's the only thing. I like. That's the only time that ever happened. Of so course. I was always like, oh no, my no, that's fucking, fucking god, that is fucking sick. Like it's like yeah, being yeah. next to like you know. But uh, everyone else, whatever, right? So yeah. so. Uh, but I used to go and, and people stayed through the goddamn night. So I get like a six pack of Heineken. Sometimes I would go yeah. alone. But sometimes I would go like on a date or whatever. Yeah. And then I just drink and watch it. And then I realized it was five dollars to get in unless you were playing. So mm. I used to tell them, but then they never followed up once you of got course. in. As long as you walked in with you an come instrument. in, with, you co yeah, you come in with a case that's just full of bud, yeah. bud lights. Yeah. You I have like a oboe case. Yeah. Yeah. But then I, it wasn't even that. It was pathetic. But they allowed it. I brought spoons. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to Christ, man. I said, I'll give it a flyer. Yeah, Worst yeah, case yeah. scenario, they, they mock me and I pay $5. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I said, oh, I'm going to play tonight. He goes, what do you got? And I was like, I play spoons. That's and, incredible. Uh, it, not, it wasn't two spoons. It was like- The whole set. There was a, No, no. It's like these spoons that like were connected. Oh. I don't know if it's like- I don't know if that's the proper instrument sure. or I just bought something that was a sure, sure. But it was these spoons that like almost were connected already. Like, like clackers? Yeah, like yeah. that, right? So, um, did you ever give him a whirl? He laughed. I did. <laughs> I'll tell you right now. I, I didn't do it there. I sure. showed him he laughed. I was like, and he's like, go ahead, get in there. And then after that, they knew me and I didn't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But my my boys are in this band called the Budos Band. The Budos yeah, Band. Yeah, Budos Bearded, the bearded ones. They started mm -hmm. it 20 years ago. They, they went to public school in Staten Island. They're all about my age, maybe a little older. It's Afrofunk. They were mm. inspired by this band called Anti Ballas, like these really good bands, right? And they became fucking am an amazing band. They now have 10 albums. Wow. They're still doing it. They tour the globe. That's awesome. And they were on this. Uh, I, I, now it's going to sound like I am doing it. I'm like, yeah. they're on the Daptone label out of Brooklyn. <laughs> yeah. They're like, you know, like Amy Winehouse. Oh, cool. Yeah. Like, yeah. A lot of them played yeah. in her band. Or That's like, awesome. I don't know if you know Sharon Jones or Charles Bradley. They yes, both I passed. actually do. But that was their label, and they're on that, you know. Cool. Label. And they ripped that's dude. It's awesome so they're so goddamn good and so one time i was like can i come on stage and play the spoons <laughs> <laughs> and then my friends were like yeah they set up a mic at like thigh level and i went up there in the middle of like a sold out concert like yeah you know, that at that time they were playing something like maybe like bowery like it was like still sure. like 600 people yeah, yeah, yeah and i just went up and like played the spoons that's awesome. like you know I, I, but were you were you on tv at the time or are you just their boy uh when i did that either way it's funny when I it's funny them. either way. Yeah, because yeah. if you were, especially if you were like just starting with Impractical Jokers and you weren't like known on your in your own right as a stand up, I, if, if people are like, I came to the show <laughs> yeah. and a guy yeah. I've seen yeah. doing some in my dentist's office, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like he's playing the spoons. <laughs> it's like what the fuck is going on? That must have been like a fuck. That's beautiful. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, like, absolutely. <laughs> I'm trying to get them to play on the cruise. We're doing a cruise. Uh, this year. I think. I, did I ever talk to you about the no, cruise? No, no. Uh, we would love to have you, but it's. I don't know if you have been cruises on cruises. Are a tough sell for tough. me, my friend. I never been on one outside of this. Yeah, yeah. This yeah. is our fifth cruise. We used to do them every year until COVID. And I thought yeah, we didn't do them again. Yeah, yeah. But we we curate the whole thing. Nice. Like it's just a hundred percent ours. The boat Love is ours. That. We commandeer the boat and uh, we book. Every, I basically made it a, a, a comedy festival. Yeah, yeah, I book yeah. like 15 comics every time, That's sick. like three, four bands, three, four DJs. It's an insane party. It's just being on it. And I don't want to, you're here partly to plug this and I don't want to be like, yeah, cruises seem like fucking we're bullshit like, to like me. Fundamentally. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. Eric Andre's co-hosting it with That's us this awesome. year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I don't have like, there's big names. I can't announce them yet though. It just seems, By the time this comes out, it'll be out. Cool, but, cool, yeah. cool. Yeah. I just like, to me, fundamentally, a cruise is one of the worst possible things you could describe to me. I would think it's so. It's like, you know, where it's like, no. now your cruise is one I would consider. Yeah. Um, I also think like on a cruise like that, it's a double-edged sword of like, it's kind of like you're trapped. It's like, there's no going away from the fans. You're kind of trapped it's there. It's a commitment, but you know? I, I learned how to do it. We learned, yeah. you know. First of all, I make myself accessible immediately. Yeah. Not like flood me, but like... I. 
You're around. We, we, well, as we leave, we get on stage and do like a like we address everybody, and it's just like, look, this is this is four nights, five days. We're gonna be around. I'm doing 16 shows on this thing between <laughs> podcasts and, and this. And that I'm, right there, I jump off the boat. No, I mean, you don't have to do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I do that yeah, just because yeah, yeah, I want to be. I don't have to. Of course, to. you want to do it. Do You're it the host. I, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I I give everything. I always yeah. lose my voice and get sick by the yeah, end. Yeah, of it. yeah, yeah. But yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. but I'm just like you'll see us. Don't go. You know, like I trust me. Like just yeah. be chill. This be chill. We want to set the tone here. Yeah. And like we're all here, we're all not going nowhere. Like, we don't want to make you and walk the plank. That's really it. For asking I, for too many selfies. And then we do it. I go I, and it's cool. I end up walking around just That's some awesome. people go every year. Like yeah, I see yeah, them. Yeah. We know, you know yeah, they, yeah, they, yeah. they book their vacation around us. Damn. So I want to show up for them, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh it's fun. You know, we I do also have a floor of my own. That's huge. They yeah, can't yeah, get yeah, to. yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, like, yeah, we have our own nice. pool up there and we have yeah, a, yeah, we can eat up there. But you need that respite. But also they have security guards with us, so we also go the back channels and so it it's very uh for me it's, it's own floor is huge it's doable. own pool yeah. is huge yeah, yeah, you yeah. know a boat with nothing but your fans you could probably get your dick sucked maybe five times a day easy <laughs> yeah i would say probably more yeah, yeah. i'd say if your dick is out and yeah, you keep yeah. it out I, you, I, if you could be like i'm going to this corner with my dick out yeah. uh well, there'll be a screening process. <laughs> I have, a, I'll have, a, I'll have, a, yeah. Elder, if it was me, Eldis will be checking. I will, I will let him know. He will be on Facetime. You won't be able to see me. He'll put the camera onto you. I will give him a nod, or I will give him a thumbs down. If you get the nod, come over, suck me off. <laughs> you sure you don't want to go on? Yeah. <laughs> and you get a plus one. Yeah. No, I actually never even got it. Even when I got. On on mm -hmm. television, I'm so neurotic. You're, are you a girlfriend guy? You feel like you might be. Yeah, like I mean, a you know, when I'm like not a, dating, like I, a know, serial so. monogamous guy. Or? I wouldn't say serial, but I've been in like I. You're, if it's there, I, I've been in three three pretty long term relationships. Okay, okay. Um, and they've been pretty long, like like six. 12, 10. Damn, like I'm bro. Older, you know? Yeah, And there's true. years in between. And when it when I'm not doing it uh, with a girlfriend, it's like Caligula. You yeah, know? okay, like, nice. I don't know if you know, yeah. that, reference. Yeah, I don't yeah, know, yeah, you know yeah. that reference. We do. I don't, but I've heard it said. So oh, I yeah. Say, no, well, no, let me okay. tell you this. Caligula, I believe... I mean, I'm kidding around, but... Dame Helen Mirren's breasts are in that movie. Really? As a young woman. Well, that's what I mean. Like, when yeah. I don't have a girlfriend, I'm you're, always you're, sucking on her breasts. Yeah, yeah, you've been... Yeah, you're on again, off again with Dame Helen Mirren, is what you're saying. Who's doing scenes from the movie, is what I mean. <laughs> no, but no, no. Yeah, I mean, you know, there I'm must have been a sick moment because, like, I also envy the, um, like, there was definitely a moment for you where it was like, oh, I am now famous, right? Like, because yeah. because it was like because and you you got to like you got to be on TV, you got to make your own show with your friends because like I envy that, and there must have been like a thing of like I'm gonna have the sickest year of my life. Right after that, you know what I mean? Where you Where were Caligula, you right. know what I mean? No, no, because I was in long term relationships. Oh, 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 I and see. And I didn't, I, I, you know, I, it I never really, popped. Nah, I don't really, I don't really, uh, you know, I stay, stayed loyal. Of course. But, uh, yeah, you don't seem like a cheater to me at all. No. Nah. Yeah, try to which stay. is interesting to do a podcast with DeRosa and DeStefano. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's like your pure energy yeah. cancels them out barely. You're like, oh, you're to the max. You're like, I am, yeah. between us, we don't cheat, but only because of how faithful I am. <laughs> yeah, I'm keeping us together. <laughs> I don't even look at other people with my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> no, <laughs> but also like I, I was weary of meeting someone brand new that right. knew me for that, and I'm telling you, it's a real thing. Well, I mean, I you know, that, you're yeah. famous now. I mean, yeah. you really are. I mean, but but that's the funny thing is, like, it was cool for you because it's like you made this show, you worked hard on it, you and your friends were in this group forever. Yeah. Like, it felt it must have felt like this accomplishment. Where it's like literally, <laughs> it was like we just started posting on TikTok. <laughs> And like, don't get me wrong. I definitely had people come up because of come town and stuff like yeah. that. But it was a year no, of posting rip. on TikTok, yeah. and it was just like one day, people started coming up to me, wow. and I was like, "Huh, this is weird." Yeah, like it literally happened in Vegas, where I was like, "And I was like, oh, it's Vegas. People, are, you know, a lot of people are coming." And then I was like working on some short film, and people were just like coming up to me. I was like, "This is strange." Yeah. And then I was just like, "I've just had to make like it's the it's a very strange thing to be like because you know." You're supposed to have a TV show. You're supposed to have like a movie yeah. or like, and I guess my special did well, but it wasn't like you know my special was everywhere. It still was like a niche thing, and but it was just like this I weird mean, it's thing. Millions and millions and millions of yeah, views. but you know what I'm saying. It was like 
It's just a now weird. Just, it's just a weird yeah, thing of no, like you turn, your yeah, brain. It's just like yeah, I guess. Oh, this is this. I just do it from posting. Yeah, <laughs> from posting, right. I'm famous. Right, like right. that fucked with my head. And yes, of and now it's a little different though because yeah, I do think in a weird way it helps you where it's like people kind of know you from the internet. They don't fully, um, you know, like you guys. They have they like bad. they really they are in me, there. Yeah, maybe me. Exactly. For that long. Yeah. And with their friends and family, like laughing. And, and it's like, such a fun thing. You guys really distill what people love about podcasts on that show in a weird way. Yeah. Like, I think that's, I mean, that's part of the success, I think, is that, like, it is just having a good ass time with your boys. And they do feel like they know you, I would assume, the same way Absolutely. a podcast. And then you go the on. Familiarity. Yeah. And I, those are like me and my friends, or I, I, I want to hang out with those guys. If, yeah. You know, and so, you know, people are. It's amazing. Like they love you. It's, yeah. it's, and I'm so appreciative of it. But it is crazy too yeah. because yeah, there's yeah, the yeah, you know yeah, double yeah. edge, you know, yeah, because yeah, they, yeah. there's no filter. Yeah. Like yeah, they, yeah. there's no like it's just whatever they want, whenever they want, doesn't matter what I'm doing, where I am, what yeah. the, like I'll get punched <laughs> and I'll turn around and some guy I have his phone, I'll be like, I mean he already has it out. Yeah. I get punched, I turn, I see a guy, he goes, Talk to my wife. <laughs> Oh my god! Yeah, the Staten Island thing doesn't help either. Yeah, yeah. I guess it's not about like, Staten because yeah. that will happen on Staten. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, it's just yeah, like yeah, you yeah. know, I'm, I'm, you know, but elsewhere it's you know, it is what it is. Yeah, but, yeah, uh, yeah. But no, I, I remember the first time. I it was two. It was less than two weeks. It was two weeks after the show began to air. Mm. So only two episodes had aired. Oh, cool. And I flew to San Francisco with my dad to visit family, and we were walking down by the like the wharf down there yeah, by yeah, like yeah. The, the prison or whatever. Yeah, it was yeah, there. yeah. And. And we're walking, it's like five or six, and we're walking one way, and I hear someone behind me, a girl goes, Sal? And I just was like, I can't be. And I just kept walking, I heard Sal. I turn around, it's like a young girl, and like a, two other guys, I think. And like, oh my God, it is you! And they came up, and wow. and, and I go, I, I go, you, you, did we did work, you rec- Did we go to school I go, together? you recognized me <laughs> yeah, from the yeah, yeah. show? She goes, no, I, no, I heard your voice. I wow. recognize your voice. That happens to me and I was like, in a movie oh. theater if I laugh. Yeah. That's my, like, yeah. I get, people won't know I'm there and then they'll hear me, you know, we'll go get fucking high, watch the dumbest movie right, of all right, time. Right. And I'll just have, and people will just be like, like echo location yeah. afterwards being like, dude, you yeah, know, you're absolutely. here to see the Meg 2 as well. <laughs> you know, like, uh, I, won't, I, I won't see it. Why? Because I saw the Meg 1 mm. and I thought it was horrible. Meg 2 is good. I thought it was horrible. Well, it's not. It's bet. I would say it's better than the Meg, the first Meg for mm. sure. Uh, okay. I didn't. In fact, I did not see the first Meg. Okay. I just saw the trailer for the Meg two, and I was like, "Yes, <laughs> yes. this is." No, that's why I went know? to the Meg one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, know, yeah but then yeah, I watched yeah. it. I was like, "This felt like literally like uh, like AI wrote it. It yeah. just was like so bad." Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. It, you're not wrong. Well, they made a sequel, so yeah, they're, yeah, they're good. Yeah. But you know, it's a the, you know now there's. I don't know if you know this. They actually got into a deeper trench with even more large sharks. You know, so, <laughs> I didn't think it would go that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's just much. And but here's the sick thing: Jason Statham fights sharks with a sword. <laughs> yeah, so, <laughs> so, so I will see it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was what hooked me in the trailer. Was he just got a sword out I, and he's about to fight a giant shark? And it's like, I will see. How? It. How last is this night, what you're trying? I, to I do? got some new weed, and like last night, it was a pretty strong weed. And last night, I smoked it. And I never really um, have any time to myself except for mm-hmm. late at night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So usually my 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 girl goes to bed like sometime between like ten and twelve, yeah. and I'm always like used to be twelve, but I now I'm in the window of ten You're to the, twelve, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. But like sometimes like so she went to bed less and I wasn't tired and I was like this is the only time this is my hour. this is the only time I feel like like this has some connective tissue to a, my life to before. retro Sal yeah <laughs> yeah yeah and yeah, so yeah. Like, I got high and then I I was like I'm gonna watch I I, I made this li- wish list on Apple mm. TV of all these. Old movies I never saw, starting from like the fifties, I love but it. through the eighties, nineties. Send me that list. <laughs> I will, and then, but then it's also like ones I want to rewatch. Yeah, yeah. But uh, you know, it's that thing where it's too much to choose from, and I was high. Yeah. And so, no joke. Last night I watched, no joke. I I watched like thirty trailers. <laughs> <laughs> God damn. At first to be like, That's let me crazy. see if I want to do this. Yeah, yeah. And then yeah. I was like, oh, that was fun. And yeah. I always I have a rule that I have to it has to be at least three options. Okay. So if I'm like, I'll keep that as an option and okay. I'll go until I get yes, another one. Yes, but yes. I was high and then I kept and I was like, I'm enjoying the trailers. <laughs> like <laughs> I feel crazy. like I'm reading, like doing cliff notes. Yeah, like, oh, yeah, I remember yeah. that. I get that. Yeah, like yeah, I yeah. watched like Robocop, Commando, Lethal right. Weapon. Okay. Like I watched just like a whole a ton of them. And then I was just like, I'm just keep watching trailers. Yeah, 
Yeah, nice. And I just watched like 25 trailers that's and then awesome, I just went man. to bed. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> really yeah. accomplished nothing. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, like... No, that's that's like making a meal of just the free samples at Costco. <laughs> you know, yeah. just being like, just putting them in a big bowl and being like, here's a chicken bake, here's a little piece of lemon meringue pie, here's a fucking t- tortilla chip. Exactly. I'm gonna, I'm gonna Costco is amazing. The best. I love Costco. Big Costco guys yeah. around here. Me too. Yeah. They, they, because they get it right. The roti- first of all, the rotisserie is great. Yeah. But also, their pizza, the hot dog, the it's chicken bake. Don't get me started on the chicken bake. It's As a fat child, yeah. I could. There was nothing I, I looked forward to more than my that parents. Chicken bake thing? Yeah, bringing me, like, yeah, getting to go to Costco and having a 750 calorie chicken bake snack. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, this thing that was like the length of my arm. Yeah. Well, as, uh, I yeah. was like, I need that. Don't even get me started I remember on when it came bakery, out. man. Oh, yeah, yeah, bakery's, bakery's top good. notch. Bakery's don't, good. Don't sleep on the liquor either. Oh. Did you know that they actually buy name brand liquor and license it under Pour their it name? into their own bottles. Yeah, so it's it's so they you're drinking like kettle when you buy yeah. theirs or whatever. It's, it's it the reverse of being in a frat where it's yeah, like you yeah. put pop off into a Grey Goose bottle, yeah, yeah, yeah. not Kirkland. Kirkland takes Grey Goose, puts it in, in their bottle. I once worked at this bar that had me do that, and I like, refused to do it. <laughs> wow. I felt bad because I had the patrons coming in knew me. I didn't want to mm. do that. And uh, I was like, this is A man up, of man. honor. I was fucked up. A man so, of honor. Working re- at fucking Merrill Lynch or wherever for five <laughs> yeah, years. Yeah. No qualms there. <laughs> letting letting his boss sexually up, harass everyone <laughs> on the floor. I would look up celebrities' <laughs> yeah. addresses. I swear to God. Oh, really? I had accounts and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the I game am I would not. play all day long was who we would play who could find the biggest celebrity's personal information, and oh, but we didn't do anything. Of course, them. of course. But like or or uh, or who could find the funniest name of an employee? Mm. And I got you right now. My two my two golden gooses yes. were Hilda Cockram. <laughs> Hilda Cockram, great which name. Which you think is a great name? Yeah. Step aside. Here comes Luba Cunts. <laughs> <laughs> a Lubacunt. L U B A K U N T Z. Lubacunt. Beautiful. I mean, I found that name 23 years ago. Oh, I, I think about yeah, it all the time. Yeah, 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 yeah. You should have a. You should have. You should put it in a locket with a heart and just like open <laughs> She's it out up. There right now. And it just says Lubacunt. Like someone, if you know Lubacunt. Yeah. She used to work with Sal 20 yeah. years no, ago. Yeah, she didn't work. No, I went like company wide. It was oh, like the company database. wide. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. anyone that ever worked for the company. Yeah. Damn, we have to look up Lubacunt, Eldis. Yeah. Uh, that's so. Sal, I'd love to. I have many more questions. You got to come back. Yes, babe. But we have to get to you. Know, both of us are on a tight schedule yes, here. Yes, you yes. know, we have to get to. Uh, we have to get to. Uh, we need your expertise with our callers here. Okay, I, I would. It. I would be remiss not to have the king, the true king of Staten Island. That's right. Take that, Pete Davidson. <laughs> there's, there's also Colin Jost in the Wu Tang Clan. Wu Tang. Alyssa Milano you know. and and, uh, and uh, Christina Aguilera lived there at times. Doesn't count at all, and you know that you cannot even no, begin no, to no, claim no, Melissa Milano. They, they won't. They won't. Uh, yeah. They won't say that. Yeah. yeah. Just look. I just. I. You can't give it to a guy that you can't give Staten King of Staten Island to a guy that looks like that. Yeah, and, he went to and, Harvard. Uh, you know he what I mean? Really a, he actually worked for the Staten Island newspaper for years. Yeah. So he's you know he's legit. Staten you know Island. it's funny. Wasps are a lot what people like that. They're like when people say Jews control the media. It's a lot of guys that look like Colin Jost, actually. <laughs> That's actually who controls the media. That's like yeah. whose uncle really owns it. Yeah. That's the, the writers might be Jewish, but you know the editors. But yeah. the guy who owns you know a paper looks like Colin Jost. And then yeah, and you Pete Davidson, Scarlett Johansson. Yeah, exactly. Listen, He's, I'm, life, so his family is. I've been I've known them, but since before any of this. Oh wow! So his brother is one of my best friends. Cool. And actually, is the he started out uh, at like as a PA on my show. Whoa! But I knew that he was could do more right but i couldn't just shoehorn him in i had to make him prove himself of course so he came on for a season let everybody let everybody meet him as a pa the next year he was a writer nice. within three years he was the head writer and now he's the director colin's that's brother so uh, sick. K- casey jost that's awesome yeah so and then they're just good people i mean i would think that no about no colin. of course yeah, like, no, i know i know but I, i'm I talking thinking about colin too but he's just a really good guy who's really freaking smart oh yeah well the yeah. thing is rich people with every advantage are usually pretty nice yeah because their lives are so easy <laughs> right. you well, know what i mean oh now now yeah 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 well come on he went to harvard again i'm sorry i'm yeah. not i know he's your he friend might, but he might have got a uh, scholarship. scholarship i don't know all right i'll look into the book rescinded if he got <laughs> no, a scholarship no, I, have no idea. I have no idea but i'm just trying to crown you the king of staten island and I'll i'm just you know 
Pete Davidson's had too much celebrity pussy. You know what I mean? And I think you he eliminated himself, I think is my point. He's he's in another strategy. Exactly. Now, so I it's think. like you're he's, you're I'll, I'll really holding crumbs. it down. You know yeah. what I mean? Exactly. Yeah. That's part of being the true king of Staten <laughs> Island. It's not a prestigious position. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm down here. Yeah. <laughs> I'm the battles of the yeah. shit, bro. Exactly, you exactly. Know, I got scars. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For better or worse. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. I it's, would say it all the time. When we first started, I would pound that drum of Staten Island because because yeah. we get a bad rap and I'm like maybe I could like change people's opinion of a little course, bit so that course. was my goal really yeah. yeah no a little bit honestly I I legitimately think of it you know 5% more fondly thanks only to you Sal you know I appreciate and 5% that. is a lot but you don't know way. it you know you come to it and I know but I'll say I accidentally went to put these on it and then I, I was wearing my fucking shades in the <laughs> yeah inside. I was like what's going like, on so, I was sorry. like so, Sal, what are we doing so, next <laughs> I was like, is this guy fucking tripping? Uh, <laughs> is it your say it again, King of <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, it's like, let me get my readers. Yeah. <laughs> somebody. Let's play. Let's get let's get let's get the king answering some questions to some of his lowly peons. So how does this work today? This is not streaming. Lo- this no, is, this is not live. In? These are voicemails. Are you just we texting? Do, oh, we do, these guy. are voicemails. So you will hear them, and they're also transcribed. Yeah. But we like to lis- you know, listen, and we kind of review the tape if we need to. Yeah, right on. Yo, Sal, big fan. Um, I'll just cut right to the chase. I recently started a new job, and it's a warehouse job. I like it. It's pretty easy, to be honest. Um. And everybody's, like, really nice, but my one issue is, I guess they're, like, really masculine is the only way I know (laughs) to describe it. Because, like, they just, like, do weird shit. Like, sometimes they'll, like, bark and shit to, like, pump each other up. (laughs) And, like, I... I have autism, <laughs> and I don't know. I don't wow, man, this song is getting peeled. Like <laughs> what an awesome drop of having autism right there. It's like this guy doesn't understand, like, basic hellos, <laughs> and these guys are barking at each other. These guys, these guys, this guy can't read the most straightforward social cues, and what the fuck is he supposed to do to, when grown men are fucking acting like Rottweilers? This poor autistic guy, like, dude. This one's, is this one on me or yeah, you? yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 that's tough. All right, we're going to try and help our friend here. Let's go. Hey, I have autism, <laughs> and I don't know how to fucking react to shit like that. <laughs> like, one of my managers, he I, he just, like, started barking at me, and I was like, okay, and I think he got his feelings hurt because I didn't, like, I don't know if I'm supposed to bark back or, like, or be like, fuck Fuck yeah, or whatever, but it, it made me uncomfortable. And there's like a lot of other shit that's like this, like the type of jokes that they tell and the shit that they talk about. It's just like, it's what, it's like the Joe Rogan podcast. Like every single one of their conversations, no offense to Joe Rogan, but it's like they're always talking about weird shit. Like, they had a dead ass conversation about polar bears for about five minutes, and the verdict of the conversation is that that would fuck you up. <laughs> anyway, I'm just trying to find a way to fit in a little bit better because it seems like the people who fit in usually go right. higher, like in the company. Yeah. So like, yeah, I'm trying to get promotions and shit. So I want people to like me. Yep. And I don't really know how to react to this shit. So, yeah. Thanks, Tom. That's tough. I would do like a reboot, like a rebranding, like the wrestlers do. I'd walk in like the fucking junkyard dog. Yeah. Just like, just a chain around your neck. <laughs> Where my dog's yeah. at. <laughs> yeah, you need to come up with, a, use your own powers and come up with an algorithm to, a, 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 a formula for how often to bark. And when your phone goes off, you let off a couple barks. Um it's tough to be I mean yeah this is tough for anyone let alone again a non-autistic like someone with mm-hmm. autism in a place where these these social cues are inscrutable um, but I feel like he has a pretty good handle on the situation and it seems like yes and I don't know if he's above this but it seems like all he has to do is bark a little bit <laughs> 
<laughs> and the problem is solved. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. you know, I mean, you know, you got a good job. You know, I mean, yeah, it's annoying. But if you just throw in a couple of woofs. Yeah, but I, I it's tough to, a woof is a hard, like. You're not going to come around on the type of people if those aren't your speed of people. Sure. So you just, you know, just bark a little bit. But I, I think the problem is a misplaced bark could do a lot of damage oh, too. You know, it's yeah. like, like. For example, if you have an autistic friend like who doesn't, it doesn't really matter to them about like asking how your day was, but they know to be like, "Hello, right. hello, Gwen, how was your weekend?" You can tr you can like know how to do that, yeah. even though they don't give a fuck at right. all. But they're right. like, "This is polite. I understand right. intellectually. I understand it, even though it doesn't mean anything to me." Right. It's hard to be like. You know, depending on the pitch of the bark, you must bark back. Right, right, or you'll right. say, or call him a little dick a homosexual if he barks right, a certain way. Right. Or, you know, it's a little, these these are little a little tough but to just maybe navigate. Fall, maybe fall into the pack. Well, I would say this, right? If they're in the Rogan zone and they like talking about obscure shit, yeah. you got to have some kind of autistic. You got to have some autistic. What's your autistic thing right. you zero in on right start doing a little bit about ancient age, how the pyramids were built put uh, put some of the autism uh, <laughs> like super focus yeah. on a thing I, no i'm not trying to, i'm not telling you to get into bodybuilding or something like that but it's like don't try and become those guys try and kind of use what's awesome about you to kind of win over friends i think yeah. like get in the zone and be like like they like talking about weird shit be the guy who has an interesting, weird topic. And yes, them being like, polar bears will fuck you up. These are, these are not savants, yeah, right? right? Like, it's not going to be take, hard to impress take them. The, take the, the broader conversation and then add a very specific, unique element to it, right? So, like, you're talking to, like, Rogan guys, so you talk about hunting, Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then tell them how you hunt hummingbirds. <laughs> yeah, you know yeah, I mean? yeah, 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 yeah. Like, like, what? Yes, learn something. My strange. dog. Yeah, woof, woof. yeah, yeah. Earth, earth. Yeah. Learn something strange. Like, I think that's your that's your better bet. And just like, um, you know, the barking. I really would like to be around these guys and see what's going on. Yeah, that's because because I feel like I do feel like I know these guys. I do know there's like. You could just go in there, you know, kind of shit on them, yeah. bust balls, yeah, call yeah, them, yeah. you know, call somebody a bitch, that kind of thing. But that's not you, and I think it's not like that's not the way to kind of. Uh, you don't want to be faking something that you don't have. So I would just say, try and get into some of these dumbass conversations with like fun facts. Or what are you into? Are you are you an elevator autistic guy? Are you a train autistic guy? <laughs> can you can you aim that to cars? Because I guarantee you. If you know about car, like yeah. the great equalizer for me in situations, because I worked, I was at a machine shop, uh, one of my first jobs, and like, um, you know, where, or any time I have to, like, I'm at some kind of barbecue or friends thing, it's like some of the great equalizers for me is, has always been sports yeah. in a situation like sure. this, you know? And it's like, do you have any interests that overlap mm. with meatheads mm. at all? And cars might diagram. be a good, the where's the Venn diagram? Yeah, yeah. Is cars in there? Is like it's kind of mechanical. You know what I mean? Like you might you know like uh, is guns in there? Do you like fucking you know? Do you like the the mechanism of a gun? Can you talk <laughs> about that? You don't like the you know you know you don't like the stand your ground aspect of it. You don't want to turn it. You don't want to turn it on a on a ethnic teenager like right. they might in in their fantasies if you know. Uh, his daughter, his daughter, who he's estranged from, calls and tells him a Puerto Rican was rough with her. This guy's got the fucking magnum ready to go in his dreams. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You'll, you won't be able to stop him from barking <laughs> if that happens. But um, yeah, I think that would be kind of my advice: is try and find that Venn diagram where you can you can fit in because it's. And you're right. You're absolutely right about it's kind of what we were talking about earlier with your job, where being likable, being fun, being the funny guy. Yeah. It's like. That's always a cheat code, and that is a way. That is a way that like our society is kind of uh, uh, harsher to people that are like either autistic or or Asperger's or some shit like that. Where it's like, yeah, you don't just being like technical whatever doesn't get rewarded as much as like someone who sucks dick at their job, but it's just a good time, right? Right. right. So I would say I would say don't try and fake it too much. Just see, get in where you can fit in, and see if you can get that Venn diagram. Of like shit that you know you're into. Like I've I've had 
I have pl- I have like a couple autistic friends who are like savants with every like football statistic, yeah. every like, and and that's just that's just their thing, right? You know. Uh, now maybe you're not one of those guys. Maybe you're a Magic the Gathering style one. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't know, but I would just say a Magic the Gathering <laughs> style autistic. Yeah, 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 so yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe you're one of those. I don't know what to tell you. One of those guys. So, but that that would be my advice. And you know, let let, let us know. I would. Does that work? For, please call back. Let us know if that works for you, and and if you have any uh, uh, any problems with that info. All this. What else we got? Get us. Let's get a couple of cute ones in here. Hey, Savvy. It's Jen. Hey, Jen. Um, first off, I just wanted to say you absolutely killed the gorge. Oh, thank you. I went down and saw you yeah. um, for the fully really loaded fun. tour, yeah. and I flashed you my juicy giant naturals at the end what? of your set, and you fucking just left me. I think uh, I said hanging. nice tits. Anyways, I wanted to I call believe because, I said nice tits. Oh, I'll make it really quick. Um, I've been seeing a guy for the last month and a half. Things have been going really well. Um, he mm. checked a lot of boxes for me. Well, hold on, pause. And, this month um, and a half. I just wanted to know. So, you would have sucked me off and put this at jeopardy. Maybe I helped your life. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Maybe I was too fucked up off uh, drinking and doing mushrooms for four days and eating like shit. To did you do, did even you do the festival? I did, did. I did a weekend with Bert there. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Bert. Okay, yeah, Bert. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I played a, one of my one of my worst experiences there. I play. I played a rock festival. I was mm, com- I'm in the comedy shoot. tent. Yep. 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 Dude, it was the there was five stages of rock yeah. music going on one hundred feet to my right, left, yeah, followed yeah, left, yeah, and yeah, they were playing. Yeah, and then, yeah. I just, and, then, and then just people were high, laying on the grass, and yeah. couldn't even hear me. One of the worst possible yeah. situations. You had to for fly into Seattle and drive four hours into this. Yeah, it's, but I mean, you guys probably had a blast. It was you? great. It was yeah. that was surreal because it was like, yeah. what the fuck's going on here? There's yeah. too many people here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyway, sorry. Show me your tits again. I won't. I won't squander the opportunity. I was just too fucked up. But anyway, month and a half. I've been seeing a guy for the last month and a half. Things have been going really well. Um, he checked a lot of boxes for me, and um, I just wanted to know and get your advice on how to decipher between a guy that is potentially codependent, a little bit needy, versus um, and, and maybe even love bombing versus a guy that's genuine. Mm. Um, you're probably wondering, well, what is he doing? You know, things like always picking up the bill, always <laughs> cooking meals for me, surprising me with flowers and gifts, um, planning, you know, the weekend, spa get days. Clue, and guy. As much as that is so nice, um, I just don't want to get roped into a guy yeah. that, again, is needy and kind of buttering me up. Mm-hmm. Um, I came out of a pretty nasty marriage, and the last few years I've been really working on myself, and um, I'm ready to find a guy that provides a lot of, you know, healthy love and respect. Yep. But I just don't know if I'm broken and I'm not seeing the signs. Mm. Um, yeah, so if you can help a sister out, that would be great. Love you. Bye. Yeah, I do think, I mean, I think obviously your head is all fucked up from this bad divorce and you can't trust my kindness. My barked. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. My ex husband <laughs> barked, gave the autistic kids swirlies. Uh, um... I think this is actually pretty simple here, and I think um, you you have to enjoy the ride here. Like, you're waiting for the other shoe to drop. Mm-hmm. You're constantly mm-hmm. worried. You're not to the point where this guy is in a scenario where this guy just really likes you and wants to put his best foot forward and really cares about you and sees a future with you and is treating you as such. You're not even... Enjoy- like, imagine if this is the one, mm-hmm. and then you've spent the first two months of this relationship... Being like, when's he gonna prove that he's a right, piece of shit? Right, you know. Right. And here's the good news: you've gone through a bad divorce. You're not like a young, naive person anymore. You've got, you've lived some life. If someone starts being an asshole, you probably have had. You probably believe in yourself enough. You've gone through enough shit where you can just be like, "Hey, you're a piece of shit. Get it? Like, right. why, why are you behaving this way? Like, that's the thing. It's it's like this quasi Buddhist shit of like, don't. Were, I mean, my, my therapist tells me this shit all the time about, because I have anxiety too, and I get ahead of myself all the time, oh, right? Man. So I get where you're coming from. I'm not being judgmental here, but I'm just saying, enjoy it while it lasts, and if this guy starts being a dickhead, you deal with him being a dickhead then. Yeah, I guess you wait, don't, wait you for know. the actual science to Exactly. Come. You can't decipher yet. There's no point in putting a brain there, right? Totally. I mean, it's like, yeah. Enjoy the spa, and if he starts being fucking weird, tell him to buzz off. I mean, that's really all there is to it. And I know it's like, 
and, and and maybe there's something because you know you're susceptible to like being guilted and maybe that's what people did in the past to you where it's like they did something nice for you and then you wouldn't stand up for yourself because you felt like you owed it to him. Let me tell you, let, let's make that clear. You don't know this motherfucker shit if he starts being a dick just because he, he bought a couple fucking fajitas. Yeah. And, you know what I mean? Like that's not, that's not worth staying in a weird fucked up relationship no, not for fajitas. Not fe- um, no, 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 no. <laughs> I think she needs to reca- she's recalibrating right now. <laughs> yes. Right? So mm-hmm. it's kind of just like... Like, you know, but then again, if she's instinctually feeling that, yeah, then that's one thing. But if she's, but if she's neur- like just neurotically feeling it, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, if, if she can discern, if she sees actual, you know, right. it's, it's something that's really making her feel that way. She might want to listen to that, but, but she's all she's described is a guy being nice. Boxes. Yeah, I know. <laughs> like, like, I know. I'd be with you if she was like, he picks, she, he, you know, he picks up, uh, he picks There's up everything flag, and yeah. he does this, but He's weird when I want to hang out with my friends. Right, like, I keep saying, what no, are you thinking right now? Yeah, yeah, there's, yeah, 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 yeah. He texts, he, he keeps asking for my location. <laughs> um, I, I, I do kind of think the one thing that makes me pause here is like, I feel like flowers and gifts is a little too much a month and a half in, but she might be a little older, so... Maybe it's just different. Maybe Damn. I just haven't dated. Flaming since. this bitch for no reason. <laughs> she might be an old piece of oh, no, shit. No, no. I'll just say as a, general, mean, I, as a general practice, I accept flowers and gifts immediately. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's just a thought I had listening to this thing. Flowers well, and yeah. gifts does sound a little extra. Like, Not everyone's the bed style Lothario like you were <laughs> at 27. You know, wouldn't even get these bitches a lollipop. All they're getting from Eldis is five and three quarters soft <laughs> with a little yeast infection on it. <laughs> Hopefully, hopefully the fucking the medicine worked, bitch. But you're sucking it either way. That's how Sula was back in the dating game. The medicine game. worked. <laughs> I'm never pulling the beast infection dick out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This guy's just a better, better than you, Eldis. But I, I know what you mean it's possible, right? But also, it's. But the, what I'm saying is like, yes, she's you know been through a bad relationship. It sounds like, and. Um, I just think the you're gonna hold back. It's natural. It's new. Yeah, you know, have your reservation. Yeah, keep it in check. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean, but I, with caution. But I would just say enjoy, enjoy this it. right now, yeah. and you owe it to just when, if and when any weird signs start happening, all you do is be you know behave like an adult and be like, hey, like, what's going on here? And if you see any of the like, if he even is like, well, what the fuck, like. Yeah, I got you all that stuff. If he's if he tries to uh, guilt you over any the second he tries to guilt you or like gaslight you or any of that stuff, then I think you know your your instincts might have been correct. But I would say part of maturity is just like not giving in to, to the anxiety that you gave into when you were younger and letting it ruin this stuff and just enjoy it for now and if it if it turns bad, it turns bad, but from what I remember you had a nice pair. And I think they'll get you a nice guy, another guy to buy you flowers, no strings attached one day. <laughs> so good luck. And, you know, uh, if I'm wrong, send me, if, if you don't think I remember exactly what your tits look like, feel free to send them in the inbox and I will take another look and let you know for sure. <laughs> yeah, that's how I'll know. Actually, I need to see your tits I, again. I desperately want the next caller to be like, hey. I'm dating this girl a month and a half. <laughs> I'm taking her everywhere. I'm cooking her dinner. I'm buying her stuff. And she's just flashing her tits. <laughs> yeah, she will everywhere stop. Everywhere we go. She will not like, stop. I went to get us beers at this concert. I just <laughs> came back and her naturals were out. I'm trying to bribe her with flowers to put her tits away. <laughs> <laughs> but she's not getting it. I'm, I'm, thinking, God, listen, I'm taking her to meals and cooking her yeah. dinner. I feel she's using her hands that can't pull up the shirt. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it's positive. Every time you don't show your tits, he buys you flowers. Flowers. He's trying to Pavlov's dog you into not putting your pulling your tits out. Um, all right, Big Eldo. Actually, before that, let's let's get some plugs out of the way in the middle of the show here, Sal. What yeah. do you, what do you, what do you want the people to see? We got the cruise coming up. Yeah, the cruise. You get tickets at getshipfacedcruise.com. Get it's like eighty percent sold, but I'm telling you, it's the it's the party of the year, really. They still the what's left over is remember in Titanic where the Irish were were <laughs> dancing underneath. Not the better half. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, plenty of good rooms available. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> but no, the biggest thing is I'm on tour right now. It's uh, everything's on sale, Love but it. I'm filming my special at the Vic Theater in Chicago Ooh. on Saturday, December second. Those are on sale right now, Love and that. if it's doing well enough, because we're shooting this a little earlier, 
uh, uh, there might be, we might add, I don't know, but uh, tickets going to go fast. SalvoCanoComedy.com. Speaking of which, we, we also, like the, the lower bottom shit, we, we just also made tickets very affordable because cool. I want people to be able to come see that I haven't seen before. So, yeah, that's, uh, that's on sale right now. That's awesome. And then... Uh, starting a YouTube, my own YouTube channel. I have the No Pressure Network where I sure. do the podcast on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, babe, and taste buds. Great but budge. starting that, see if I can get those numbers up to like a half a mil before I do the special in case I'm releasing it there. So cool. the way I'm incentivizing everybody is if you subscribe, uh, starting like next week, I'm going to start giving away prizes on there but like of significance nice like a prop from the show nice. you know autograph shit or like a free tickets to see me or whatever it is a, Love vi- it. a set visit and i'm picking them from the subscribers on my only on the uh my youtube channel sal volcano official is the youtube channel sal volcano official go and the vic rules that'll be great That's yeah man i'm psyched fun. love that place psyched. we had great shows there um yeah you should do we I, when, when we did when we recorded the special we did the Paramount, and I ended up doing four shows. Which, Paramount in Austin. Yeah, and I ended up doing four I shows. Love that and theater, I really like that. Hot, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's great. I've only done it at the Moon Tower and mm. stuff, but no, but the Vic is really good. I mean, amazing. The Vic is I one of my on the last tour one of my favorite. Yeah, it's like uh, one of my favorite. I love it. I, I, it yeah, because it's like I want them right on top. I could just it feel definitely that, feels that, that way. The, feel that those were. I mean, I mean they're both great, but I love the the Vic might have been my favorite on the tour. Other than other than where we when we did the special, I mean it was fucking amazing. I love that. Awesome. Place. Well, give me uh, that. Give yeah. Me that energy. Go go see go see our boy Sal, and uh, let's take some fucking call. Let's do a couple more questions. We you know we do have to go. Sorry, folks. I have to eat Italian food for a friend's birthday dinner. Uh, but you pull up that menu in the car. I'll tell you. what, thanks. what <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. I can't really. wait. Uh, hit us with a question, Big Eldo. Hello, Mr. Stavi, and. Uh, whoever else is lucky to be on the mm. pod, my name is. I guess please don't include my name because I'm not trying to dox. Okay, my boyfriend. Oldest... Um, so... Dox your boyfriend. Oh. Here's your real name. <laughs> Incredible, but yeah, or I'm sorry, bleep it twice. <laughs> okay, so this nameless person. <laughs> let's see what her what her. Uh, uh, oh. I really don't know who else to ask, and I feel like genuinely you can give me like some solid fun advice, funny mm-hmm. it, funny advice, and help me out. So I've been in a relationship for two years. Um, my boyfriend moved me across the country. Like mm. we're you know we're in it That's awesome. together, but the one thing that I know bothers him um, is, is body count. Oh, I have a higher body count than him what we're about it? the same but he is younger than me um he's 24 i'm 28 actually today's his birthday and Happy birthday <laughs> i guess shout out <laughs> not him um but uh so basically i've been getting him into comedy um how does that hmm. come into our body count well so we both have been like fucking around thinking you know we just get in Deep diving from podcasts, now all of a sudden we're like, wow, we could try stand-up too. Mm, um, and a lot he of red genuinely here. thinks he can. Oh, and man. he has a good sense of humor, but he can't live with the fact that my body counts a few more than him. <laughs> and it's not because like Pause either this. of this us is, are like... I'm really looking forward to how these narratives intertwine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is like a Seinfeld Thanks, I was just going to say that. It's like old, <laughs> yeah. All episode. right, we got the George the George B plot about body count <laughs> yeah, and yeah. Elaine's doing yeah. comedy. <laughs> and, all right, go ahead. And then Jerry moved his girlfriend across this country. Let's see how this all comes together. Caught right. Be, like, we're both attractive people. <laughs> I just was a dumb broad from Florida who wanted to live my life, you yeah. know, and he was just a fun South Central L.A. guy who wanted to buy some vacuums here and there, and I'm all for that. Like, we'll still cut it up, go to the strip club, whatever. Okay. But he can't really handle the humor, so I'm not sure. I, and and it doesn't humor. bug him. Like It does, but not in the time, like, in times of, like, Big argument. This, this is starting or to feel like, like that's where I error know, on like, your part. Stuff he's like unlearning, but I just want to know. Like, I mean, I can't remind him. Like, I don't know. Like, you got to get over this. But I know it bugs him. Is there anything yeah. I could be doing, with, like, mm. yeah, it's unconsciously to like try to help him? Uh, like, no. my job, I work with like all gay guys in West Hollywood, so it's not like that threatening there, you know. 
Um, I don't know. Just is there something I could be doing as a girlfriend to just help to him unsuck get dick? more comfortable? <laughs> um, because we, we talk about uh, it. And we both, do you have you a know? time machine? <laughs> yeah. you, what you're gonna need is a DeLorean. <laughs> <laughs> you fall out I of the tree. Movies for you to watch. Fall out of the tree. Slap <laughs> cock out of your hand. <laughs> Kiss your mother, and then. Uh, <laughs> All right. Is there more no, to this? No, it's like silly things, but also like, hello, like, yeah, it is my fault. I mean, not my fault, but like my bad. I just didn't want to cheat on a boy. I didn't be in a relationship. You know, I just wanted to fuck around and yeah. have fun. But yes, love the pod. I'm actually currently rewatching a video episode right now. Um, big fan. Sorry to keep this long. Love you guys. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Well, let me just say first, what we need is more male stand-up comedians that are threatened by women that have sex. <laughs> that, we need more m more men harboring misogynistic sentiments, doing stand-up cow and slut-shaming women. I think well, that's what. So this guy really has a future in the industry. But yeah, um, I mean, yeah, yeah this that's tough. Do you have? I have a couple well, of first, thoughts. But go but ahead. My first thing was like, wait. They probably listen to this podcast. Probably. So how's she going to avoid that? Uh, you know, who knows? That I mean, our problem. He's going to know her when he hears it. He probably will, but he that's why she wants her name bleeped. So yeah. he'll know, which is interesting. Yeah, but then but she I'll says 700 other words. Yeah, she, yes, yes, yes. She's pretty. Yeah. She talks about where in L.A. he grew up, <laughs> where she grew up, that they want to do calm. Yeah, I mean, this is, but again, not my problem, yeah, Sal. Right. <laughs> yeah, um, uh, I think that if you're leading off like this, I don't think you, I really don't think you go any further without, without addressing this because it doesn't go away. And all you're doing then is you're, 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 you're investing more time. It's only going to yeah. get harder if you guys can't get on the other side of that right now. Yeah. And I think like, first of all, it's like, come just dude, what do you think is going to happen? If you end up with a hot woman, you're, she's going to have fucked more than you. <laughs> That's the way the world right. works. Right. And by the way, what you want to, you want to, you want to date someone who can't suck a dick. Well, how do you think she gets the hour? How do you think she gets those Malcolm Gladwell 10,000 hours? You know what I mean? Like, you want someone that knows how to fuck, chief? And it's like, what the, who, just grow up. Who gives a fuck? Yeah. Um, now, yeah, but yeah, I think you're right. There's no way, and by, the, here's something that's a little weird. He's 24, right? Mm -hmm. So, now I get it, right? I can say this, I'm fucking 34. I've been through... A lot of women have destroyed me. You know what I mean? Like I've sure. uh, a lot of you know. I've definitely had those jealous thoughts, especially at his age. Mm -hmm. So there's yeah. a little. That's part of the problem, yeah. right? It's like you just kind of life just fucks your ass enough. Where you're like, yeah, my girlfriend fucked a hundred guys. I don't care. <laughs> it's cool. In fact, I like. She knows. She picked up a couple cool tricks along the way. You know. But as at 24, you're you know maybe you don't feel that way, right? Yeah. yeah. Um. So. There's nothing you can do. Where did the, wait, how did the comedy play into it? I don't know. She's just not, you know, her body, she's not really with it. You know what I mean? She's pretty, you know. I don't know. I really don't know how the comedy play. Maybe she jokes about fucking a bunch more guys, but I don't know what she's talking about. She's a little all over the place, our friend here. I think that's part of it. Now, there's not much you can do. I'm a little dubious of a 24-year-old, this being, I don't want to, I don't want to be, you know, I don't want to. Um, just talk out of school. It seems like you're in a good situation here. I'm a little dubious about this relationship yeah. in the long term. Yeah, it sounds like it's been a two year one already. Is year? that what you said, Did I catch Eldis? That right? Yeah, so two it's years. Twenty two, yeah. 22 and twenty six. That's interesting. Uh, it's nice to see the woman on the other side of that. Actually, I I like that. <laughs> like, uh, uh, but um, she seems to be in. Our friend here seems to be in. Yeah. But I worry about a twenty four year old guy who will just let that jealousy fester. Yeah. Um, now, also, I wonder if it's just like a problem with the body count or a problem if he had a higher body count. If he did? Yeah, would it, would it be a problem? Probably not. The way she prompted it. Probably not in, a, in a weird, fucked up yeah, way. Probably right, not. Right. Um, but there's nothing that will, I don't know that you can train him not to give a fuck about this. And so, what can you do? I mean,. I do think you could do some kind of multiplier math where it's like you could let him fuck someone and then it's like one fucking someone in a relationship, that's like, that's by four. 
Yeah. One pussy yeah. counts. That one yeah. pussy undoes undoes four dicks. Yeah. I think that's that's my little formula. If you really want, if we want to get down to brass tacks, just crunch the numbers. I'm just yeah, crunch the numbers. <laughs> How much have you outfucked him by twenty, by forty? Well, there's your. He's got to fuck four. He's got to five, five, ten women. You know that kind of thing. Maybe or honestly, just like, are you bi? Do you want to fuck girls with him? That might be because a guy nah. like this. Your girl fucks a girl that doesn't count to him, right? You know what yeah, I mean. No, no, so, no. so this no. is a way for you to put up zero, right? Because right, right, it's not a body count; it's a right. dick count, right. right? It's not. So, so, and so, I think maybe that's a way you could go if if you if you're interested, but also a frank conversation. A frank, yeah. Just, I know you don't want to bring it up, but you're two years in, right? Yeah. yeah so you yeah. guys are there for a reason, right? And maybe approach it in a way that it it bothers you that he feels that way. Because you care for him and you wanted to bring it up because you don't want it to be the undercurrent of the relationship or whatever or be hanging over your heads. And you'd love to do something like you, you just, you know, you can, you, you care for him and you want to move past that kind of thing. How, yeah. do, how do we do it? Ask him. Right, 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 you know, like, right. Which would be kind of big of you because let's be honest. What you did before you met someone is it's crazy for someone to judge you for that shit. Right. Especially two years in. I mean, really, the hard part here is like. He's got to fucking grow up. Yeah. But I agree with you. If you really want to, like, if you're meeting, willing to meet him more than halfway, Sal's right, where it's more, a lot of the times, a lot of these questions boil down, answers to these questions boil down to have a conversation about the thing that's fucking you Number up. Number one thing, communication. Yeah. yeah. So, good luck. Now, if they start doing comedy, this relationship is disintegrated. I promise you that. <laughs> I'd like it to be a... Uh, Without a question. Wife act yeah, 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 yeah. Um. Hey, this is uh, Chris from any random place in the world. Uh, I heard you talk about the military before and, you know, that a lot of people that join the military join because they don't have anything else they could really be doing with their lives. Yeah. And I'm Pretty about much. to hit 11 years here, you know, and that's nine years away from retirement. But I've just grown to, like... I'm not going to say I hate it, but it's just constant anxiety. I'm not excited to go to work anymore. So I would like someone that's impartial. <laughs> yeah, I don't never know. been in the military to, you know, you know what they would think. Would you do the extra nine years to get that retirement? Or would you get out and be able to enjoy your life and do stuff? Thanks. Okay. Well, I will say, yes, I mean... I, that is what I think of the military. I think they take advantage of a lot of people in this country and across the world. Uh, but you have joined up. It's been, you said it's about to be 11 years. You're probably relatively young. And the thing is, as mu like this is coming from, not, not only am I, it's not that I'm impartial. I'm actually anti <laughs> doing this. So the fact that I'm about to tell you, yeah. stick it out, because I know a lot of people, like, you know, there's comedians who, Retire, did the exact same thing. They get yeah. into the armed forces early, right? And that that is one of the big advantages. It's like it's like a teen mom. It's like yeah, it's a fucking nightmare when you're 16 and having a newborn. But when you're 32 and have a 16 year old, right? That's pretty fucking it's cool. Pretty amazing. You know what yeah. I mean? Like you've had kids. Like I yeah. haven't. I'm 34. I'm I might not have kids, right. but there's people out there who's who's 34 and have a grown fucking kid. Yeah. So as much as you fucking hate it. The world sucks dick. You know, it's, the military does suck more probably than a You're lot of jobs. The devil you know. Huh? Exactly. The devil you know, yeah. But here's the thing. If you were to stick it out, you know, and again, I'm assuming you're relatively young, then you really get to, you get to actually do shit you like. And I'm getting, you know, if I'm not, let's say you went into 20 and it's, it was 20 years, you're 40 years old. You know what I mean? Like you're, you're a young person still in the grand scheme of things. And, and you're, and you have a pension and then you can, you know, maybe work part-time or only do shit you, you really want or, or really you, you get more of an opportunity to enjoy things. Whereas if you quit now, you're kind of in this fucked up no man's land mm. where you didn't, you took 11 years that could have been going to something you like a little more. Yeah. But those years are gone. I, I, yeah. I would like, cause it's, it all depends, right? Like, is there anything redeeming 
about it to him being mm-hmm. in the military still, right? Does it provide him structure or like, whereas if he didn't have that kind of structure, he might be wayward or, or be lost, right? Yeah. And so is it the lesser of two evils? I mean, like if you're going in every day and you can't stand every single day, I mean, I would also crunch some numbers. I mean, what kind of pension are you getting? You know, right, right, you know right. chart that over nine years and, you know, do you have any other things that you like or any other opportunities where you could say, all right, you can compare something. Right. Because I, I get what you're saying wholeheartedly. I, and I also don't disagree necessarily, but I uh, am a little older than you now. Yeah. And uh, I have that switch has flipped for me where I feel like it, everything's going very fast. I'm ha- like having a midlife crisis. Yeah, type yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. And so for me on my brain all the time now is holy shit. Like, and we know this, but we don't know it until we like time is our most valuable asset yeah, yeah, yeah. you know and life is short so that's what i'm thinking and you know we know it we hear it and everything but then it's still it's 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 not doesn't go fast and it, until it does yeah 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 so even though you know it and you know it and you think you're experiencing that version of it when you actually have that moment where you see your parents getting older you getting older or whatever your kid yeah, yeah, and yeah. you're like oh shit like i'm and you feel physically and then you feel like you're on a clock at that point yeah all perspective changes. Sure, and yeah. I think there is something to that. Now, if he's a little older, right? Yeah. If he if, if he's starting to feel that, I think that's definitely valid. And if he's got, like you said, an opportunity, something set up right away, mm. then you know, if you think you have a way to go make a living immediately that you would enjoy, you have that all set up, you have that planned out, and you can make the jump immediately. But if you get out, don't really have a plan, kind yeah, of fuss around I, for yeah. two years, and now. You now, if you had yeah. just stayed, it's seven years away. 100%. You know what I mean? Like, so that's what I'm saying is like a plan. If you happen to be like, we don't know enough, but it's like if he's a relatively young guy, yeah. Because that's the thing, he he would just be joining the workforce as a like you know thirty year old guy, right? There's, there's not, it's not like it's good out there, right? No job is good, right? right? That's and true. one of the good things, one of the like positives in the military, is that you can you know retire after twenty years and. People typically get into them so young, like right. sometimes 18 years old, right. that you retire as a 38-year-old. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's so it's amazing. like, so I would just caution our friend here to be like, unless you have a sick setup, unless or even not something sick, something where you may not might not make as much money, but like, let's say you want to run your family business or yeah. do and if you if you don't have something another outlet go right away, then I personally think it makes sense to stick it out and then then you're, you're, you know, the next nine years are going to be dog shit. But guess what? Most people's, most people's 30s are kind of dog. Like, they're good years, but yeah. it's like work-wise are kind of dog shit. Yeah, what percentage of people feel like they don't work a day in their lives because they love their job? Not many. Right, not many. Not, not many. many. So is it, you're going to be making a parallel move or you're going to fix this problem, right? right? And also, you might be at, you're, you might not be at the point of no return yet, but in a few years, I would say you would be at the point of no return. Sure. Where it's like, come on, it's an it's an arm's length. I mean, you're you're yeah, you're over half. That's yeah. something. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, um, and so I would. That's kind of my general, without knowing super specifics about our friend here. I think it's just like stick it out. You know, as long as they don't make you do any fucking war crimes, as long as you're in a fucking office somewhere. No if you don't, reds. If you don't wake up in the middle of the night and hear. <laughs> Kurdish children screaming in your dreams. If you if if you, if you don't have any of that going, if it's not clawing at your fucking uh, you know conscience, like then fucking every job sucks dick. Just stick it out, and you'll be a relatively young guy who then can you know then you're afforded a nice degree of freedom after that that a lot of people in their forties don't have. A lot of yeah. people. When they're going, like you'll be able to have your midlife crisis and potentially be retired during it, right. and just be having a good right. time, just yeah. spending time with your kids, whatever. I don't, you know. Again, we don't know your exact situation, but you know that's our general thing. If you're relatively young, with no plan, just fit, stick it out. But if you're maybe a little older and you have something that you you can go into right away that you you're pretty sure will be successful, go ahead, take the leap. But otherwise, stick it out. Fuck it, you've already done over half of it. Um, so anyway, look, we, I'd love, to, this is so fun. I'd love to do this for another hour. Yeah, babe. We have to go. I have to eat fucking, uh, linguine. Uh, and, uh, but we will talk soon. Go see Sal on the road. Go see the special, go to the cruise, uh, and then come see us on the road too. Stabby.biz for tickets. Sal, thanks so much for coming, buddy. So, so fun. fun. Yeah. Yes.
See you next time, guys. Bye-bye.